morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, property subcommittee meeting of August 15th at 9 a.m. And uh, Pete's Architects has supplied us with some concepts and some uh, spreadsheet on space allotments and what they think potential project costs would be and uh, now we got to start figuring out how do we start moving forward um, so I would say at this time I turn it over to Kevin from Deets Architects and see what he's got to tell us today okay um, just kind of going through the agenda here so the first thing is um, contract progress. Um, we got the contract by DocuSign and we just haven't seen the, I guess, the final signed version yet. That should have came in your, whoever signed should have received a copy because I know it's finalized. Okay. Yeah, and, and maybe Carrie, who's been out with COVID, oh, okay. has yeah. got it in her inbox. Because it's been signed okay. Um, okay. and yeah, it was, we received it last week. Okay, I checked with uh, our accounts person this morning and she said she had seen it. I can board a copy. Carrie it. hasn't been. Okay. I can board you a copy if you like. No, I'll, I'll take a look. Thank you. Though. All right, um, just wanted to review the schedule. That's what's up on the screen there. We've kind of slipped by a couple weeks from the original schedule just because of summer issues. Um, hopefully that's not going to create too big of an issue. Okay. Well, we're on schedule. I was talking to Deb this morning about the next meeting because we're trying to get into some type of sequence. Starting another week or so, we're going to be back in session. So the, the 9 o'clock morning meetings probably aren't going to work for the majority of the team. And uh, I'm not speaking to you or one of you, but I'm going to try to advocate for your schedule as well. My recommendation would be, uh, knowing that we have to move to an after school meeting time, to realign it to the board meeting and meet around 3 o'clock. That gives us a couple hours to meet as this subcommittee, and then you're already here for the full board. Uh, it just is a waste of multiple days we come on campus. That'd be my recommendation. And if that's supported by the team, that means the next meeting would be September 20th, starting at 3 o'clock. I know that's a little delayed. But, uh, the issue would be a, the upswing of preparing the campus for the first day of school in another week and a half or so. so. I just put that out there as a team for discussion. Um, sounds like a reasonable suggestion. And uh, I'm a little concerned about not meeting, the, this committee not meeting again for another month. Um, One so option would be I, the 30th, August 30th. Now, Deb would not be here if you have a that's day number two for school. <clears throat> I can, I won't be here for that one, and I won't I won't be able to make the ones prior to the board. But I think I can. I have plenty of opportunity to cross over. So I, even though I'm sharing that, I don't think my schedule should uh, because I have school council. So I don't think my schedule should drive it. But I have plenty of opportunity to cross over with Tim, Crystal, and Andy. That's the All right, um, so what are you suggesting, Andy, when would the next meeting, when, 20th, this second? We right. could go, well, we could go with August 30th at three o'clock. Deb would not be here, mm -hmm. we take the notes. Okay. The next would be, uh, my recommendation would be September 20th, which is the September 4th meeting, also at three o'clock. So if you want to meet before the 20th, I would recommend the 30th, it just means I think it's important we keep this process going. Can I? What did? What did? What did? What do you? What's everybody else think? The thirtieth. Yes. Okay. Let's let's plan the thirtieth at three p.m. Is that correct? Yes. And 
then we have the board meeting the 20th at 5. And I think we should also target that date at 3 p.m. that established let's go from there that work for yeah uh, Kevin and you know well, I think we need to kind of look at what comes out of this meeting here and, um, you know it's going to be some uh, some discussion about you know the siting of the building because of you know kind of the portions of the building that we're kind of uh, figuring out as we're as we're kind of looking at things so, you know, it might give us an opportunity if it is delayed a little bit to put get some options together. And, uh, but let's um, kind of keep going and see where we land after right. this. Okay. All right. So the next, um, the next item is the program of spaces. <coughs> So we had, um, what we looked at last time was the full program option, and that was the, the different spaces at kind of the full, the full size, and you know, the classrooms being a thousand square feet, and there's a few other spaces that, you know, could possibly be reduced, and this is, you know, kind of following the, your direction to see if there are spaces that could be reduced. So I kind of need your your input on this because I, I can't make this decision you know, on my own. So um, the next one is the reduced, you know, the same about 2,200 square feet. You know, with this, which you know, when you translate that into dollars per, you know, multiply that per, by the dollars per square foot, you know, it's, it ends up being substantial. So um, you know, so. Basically, what I did is, you know, I took four classrooms from 1,000 square feet to 800 square feet. That might be, you know, more than you can do, but um, depending on how many kids are in, in individual classes. Um, we still have a larger um, or cultural classroom that we're kind of keeping at the same level. The horticultural shop is different, taking that from 2,200 down to 2,000. And I think I, I brought it up to 2,200 um, to kind of add a little space for, you know, I don't remember what it was, but it made sense when I looked at the program originally, the way it was described in that written program, that it might be better with a couple hundred more square feet. So I just brought that down to where I think it was originally suggested it could be. Uh, equipment repair shops, we had three at 1,000 square feet that the three at 900 square feet. Um, and this is just how, kind of the way that we were discussing it the last time. I think a two bay and then a single bay um, space. Then locker rooms, bringing that down a little bit. These are just like little outposts on the hallway we're thinking about. Head house, bringing that from 1,000 to 800 square feet. Just, just looking at ways to try and you know, make some reductions in the, in the size of the building. <coughs> You know, we're still looking at, you know, overall building of 21,820 with the reduced um, square footage. So it's still, you know, I think when you're thinking about cost, still a good size building, a good size cost. So, and I put some cost down here just to kind of guess at things. And, um, you know, I, we do have a little basement level, which is just the um, equipment storage area, you know, underneath at the, you know, what would be the east end of the building where it goes downhill. And um, so I mean, these are pre, you know, before we looked at, like, uh, I think it was before the markups and all that, that, and all the soft costs. So that's kind of where that And what were those? The total lines within the bottom. We have a different version of that. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. We have. Kevin, yeah, your option here to be reduced. We don't have this sidebar. Right. Yeah, okay. So my guess is you took this yeah. and created that yeah. next version. Yeah. 
So we can send this to you after this meeting. Okay. Can you just quickly tell me what those two amounts are about? Um, this is 6912.5 and then 7900. And that's based on like a range of 350 to 400 square feet or dollars per square foot. So, I mean, the, the way we're approaching this and thinking about it is that, you know, you're not getting state assistance on this, you know, in the form of like MSBA. And so we're really looking at it as uh, like, what can we do to try to keep all the costs down? And that's going to come into play in, you know, how the building gets constructed and how the building gets sited. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of factors that will add cost, you know, in the project. And so we're trying to consider all that. So, like I said, those numbers, you know, I think you have the full, the more full version there that has, yeah. Yeah, this was in the packet. Yeah, smart ups and whatever. And markups and soft costs added to them. Yeah. And those are just my guesses, so please don't hold me to them too, too much. All right, so I guess, you know, is there, you know, do you want to kind of digest this and maybe get back to us on the space reductions? You know, what we're going to show you is based on, you know, after this is kind of based on the full program. And um, and so, you know, if we can reduce the spaces to, to what we're suggesting, you know, it'll help out. Yeah. At some point today, I'm not sure when. Uh, I can, I think between all of us, we can put out an update that as far as where we are financially, but not there. <coughs> not even close to the honest. So, so I'm not sure if we want that conversation now or if we want to go through all the you know, your updates and we talk as a team. Um, I think <laughs> all of the above is important, obviously. Um, I would certainly like to hope we start moving forward in some end game idea and charge create another subcommittee of some sort being the finance let the property people do their part and saying this is what we'd like to do okay finance um, get us the money how are we going to get there not can we get there, but how are we going to get there? Is this piece something you designed in regards to bonding or something? I'd like to talk about that too. Yeah. That's what I thought that So, um, obviously appreciate this, this uh, thinking ahead in terms of this. Um, to be honest with you, I, I feel a little blindsided. Um, not knowing some of the things that are developing behind the scenes um, and maybe uh, I take some of the blame there of not communicating maybe with you and, and Tim in that and where we're going with everything. So the bond, this literally came to us 15 minutes ago. Okay. Uh, so that So I think maybe this time we can talk about the financial finances. Yeah. I don't want to, I want Kevin to be on board and kind of know where we're at, so I need to keep asking for some input and I want to make sure we're on the same page. Um, financially, we're not in a good position. That's the Cliff Notes version. Uh, the insurance, you know, we, we did get an, an estimate last week, I think, from the insurance company of what they're going to uh, pay out for the structure. Uh, best case scenario, you we're looking at uh, like 940000 Insurance, but that includes demo costs, it includes the architect contract, and, and everything else. So that 940 probably could be gets closer to the 850 or so. I'm throwing out round numbers here. So we're not talking about 1.4 million of insurance, and probably, probably 850. At some point, we'll have an estimate from the insurance company on equipment replacements. And we've talked about that. I think the max is 250 or so. I think we were insured. We're not going to see that, obviously, because we lose all the equipment. And, and that's why we've been looking for those donations. We've been receiving a lot of donations, particularly helped. 
So how much of the equipment insurance can be applied to the building? I've been talking like 100,000. So again, we're still shy of a million dollars in the insurance total. The grant that we submitted, I thank you to Joe and Melanie, submitted the skills capital grant about a week and a half ago, um, where we can apply 30% of that grant towards construction costs. Um, unfortunately, poor Joe was here until well past the business day on Friday. Uh, the state has come back and is, is asking for more information, more information, more information. Uh, this included photographs and narrative to explain the photographs, explanation of why we want the equipment that we're asking for. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about how they're going to award that particular grant. Um, I was hoping 600,000 that could be applied to the building. I don't know if we can see that. There's the other grant I, I referenced to the board. We will apply as soon as it comes out. That's a larger skills capital grant. Um, my concern with that is in order to have 70% of that grant applied to the construction costs, um, we need to ask for a lot of money for that 70% to get bigger. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier today, that this meeting, 70% of a dollar versus 70% of a million dollars. I want to ask for a lot of money so that 70% gets bigger, we can apply more to the building. The challenge is, is if we're being nickel and dime by the state to explain the equipment we're asking for this room, what equipment haven't we asked for yet that we can ask for next time? And that list is going to be dry up. Because we're asking for a dump truck, we've asked for backhoe, we've asked for a lot of equipment in this room. But best case scenario, we still come up, still get to that $4 million range, give or take, most likely. If all those ducks line up um, somewhere around the $4 million. This is where this came about, just so we're all on the same page. Again, we're trying to avoid MSBA for many reasons. Uh, this is a time crunch. We need this building built as soon as possible. MSBA is a very long process, as we talked about in the past. MSBA also complicates things with these grants that we're applying for. Uh, so we're trying to avoid MSBA. Talking internally, uh, outside this particular committee, we were wondering what the, the feasibility would be if the city was able to bond this particular project. And could we go through the city, have them bond the project, and then perhaps we pay the city back in a revenue source? So I charged Crystal to have some of those initial conversations. She did, I thank Crystal for that. Uh, one issue is we can't use operating money for such a thing because that applies, it goes towards our net spending figures. So we have to find a revenue source outside of our operating budget. So what I would recommend would be cell tower revenue. Uh, that's approximately $2,000 a month that we get in cell tower revenue. So what we literally just got for us, right before this meeting, <coughs> We asked the city, you know, what would it look like between 10 million and 15 million for a bond? Thinking that could handle this particular building project, what we've been talking about. We obviously have other uh, the ag complex renovations that we're trying to do for containing animals and whatnot. We wanted to see what would it look like. So that's what you have in front of you. And just to highlight, that orange box, that's a 30-year bond for 10 million at 4% interest, which is kind of the going rate right now. I just want to highlight to the committee that in year one, that's at the bottom line, it would cost us $346,666 for the year. Divide by that, divide that by 12 months, you're looking at a monthly payment of just over $20,000. Our cell power revenue is $2,000. We can't touch that. So again, I'm just pouring cold water on the, the party here. I'm sorry for that, but uh, we can't come close to 10 million for a bond project. Back to the 4 million that we may have between insurance and keep our fingers and toes crossed that the grants will come out in, in our favor. If we could add up 4 million, could a bond be much smaller to help get closer to what we're talking about and kind of do share with us? I'm thinking like a two million dollar bond maybe. I, I just I without board approval, I would not necessarily recommend that we spend every cent of the cell tower revenue every month. You know, that's, a, that's a great safety net that we need to have as a school. Uh, I'm just trying to be sustainable. So, as I've said in the past, I lose sleep over this because I do worry about the finances. You know, this is a property, but I don't want Kevin to be going full speed ahead on, on a building project that at the end of the day we can't afford. So I just want to make sure we have this conversation so. So, 
I do apologize that this is last minute, but this is not good news, obviously. I don't see how you afford it, but you've got a bottom. Uh, not to mention, if you go around, the bottom is a $15 million bond, uh, where they get 30 years versus 20 years. So my question is, how do we, you know, what what does a building project look like if we're in that four to maybe six million dollar range? Kevin, uh, and Kevin, great giving some examples of you know, cutting down construction costs, with steel building ideas, and, and other options. Uh, do we have to look at the existing building, not knocking the existing building down? How do we save the current garage and the head house and the one classroom? Do we maintain that structure, make it look nicer, and build off it? Uh, I want to thank both the board members last meeting mentioning the forestry building. You know, if we look at the forestry building as part of this project, uh, we bring utilities up there and use that current structure to help meet some of the needs that we've identified. I know there's a lot, but uh, I think we do need to have a plan today so we can do it before. Well, I certainly agree with the concept that we need to plan today or very soon to be able to start figuring out what direction we are moving forward in. Um, and we know the, re the reality is Yes, this is what we should be doing. We should be rolling the dice and trying to get this this project uh, moving forward in in not just a fix it mode, but a future mode. And how how do we get there in dollars? Um, you're just presented a scenario where it doesn't seem practical or realistic. Um, have we shaken? all the trees, bushes, um, what other avenues. Um, I don't know. I don't know the process the way you do, obviously. And um, just trying to... Shaking the, the state tree, which we were hoping that the tree would shake for us. Um, as we know, Senator Cumberford put in a part of the economic development bill at 225000 for this particular building project, along with a million dollars for the school-based health center. That economic development bill has stopped. It's stopped. Because of the revenue access that the state has, the governor identified the law that was passed back in the late 80s and stopped that entire bill. So uh, I don't see the state money coming through. True. And, um, yes, certainly. From, a, from my perspective, I think I would like to move in the direction of what is. What is it that we really need and hope for? And then if other funding sources come in, is it designed in such a way that we have the capacity to add on? From, from my perspective, I, I would suggest us designing that way. So when I initially look at this, I think we have two serviceable greenhouses. I think those can come off the list. Uh, <clears throat> the 1,800 square foot garage, I think having it designed is good, but I think it should come off of that list because I think that's something that we can build internally. Uh, you know, and if that's tuition revolving or if that's other funding source. So I do think there's things like that that we can begin to to remove from the plan. And as I look, I really like this flow sheet. Um, you know, I do like the idea of trying to keep four or five classroom spaces. But because if we are able to bring water or electricity out at this uh, forest, does that decrease the garage space that we need to build here because maybe some of the heavy machinery, the, the, the school's educational goals and the instructor's goals is that at some point the plan was always to move the bulk of the heavy machinery up there to clear out that space again and to replicate what used to happen in the park, what is now was sold to the hospital and replicate them to be able to um, move earth, dig ditches, practice with the equipment in the large open air space. And I do think electricity and water would put us to a point where we could actually rep replicate that training up there and that becomes something that's used on a regular basis, which would minimize the need for some of the spaces here. It would still need the garage space that could house the heavy machinery repair and their own equipment that would need to be serviced. Um, and maybe the dual purpose 
that Kevin was suggesting, where the, the, the climb, indoor climbing apparatus and things can be there, which is something we could apply for in the next round of the grant, things like that, or the lifts for the log mortars and things like that. That's all equipment and machinery that we could apply for in the grant, which would allow us to outfit a building that we build. From my perspective, if I'm looking at what is it we need to fulfill education but still give us a little extra, as, as uh, the hope is to add a teacher and to increase the number of students down there, I think it's the classroom space and that because the campus is their shop and that the building up there is part of their shop. So it's not, it doesn't need to be a self-contained 20,000 square foot because they, have, they use the entire campus, they use the wood lot, um, and I, so I do think that they have an abundance of, of available space for all the training tonight. That, from my perspective, I, I would recommend us focus here. What, if I can ask this question, what, we got two weeks before school starts. Tell me what's going to happen in two weeks in regards to kids coming on campus and what your expectations are sure. for either that property, which we know is probably not useful for three years, uh, unless you so, can utilize yeah. part of it. So th thankfully, uh, taking that document out, we went out to get in for the demolition. So that, that got held up because of the time lapse between the fire and now, we did have what they did the demolition. Uh, that will be tomorrow, correct? 24th. Next Wednesday, I'm sorry. So the bid opens up next Wednesday. Uh, fingers crossed that the winning bid will be ready to go. Uh, um, Hoping that following week, that Monday or Tuesday, the games park comes in. So probably the first couple days of school we'll see a demolition occur. Uh, status on power? Um, power, they're, they're going to fire it up today to make sure it works on that front half. And then it would just be disconnecting the water from the demo and uh, reattaching it after the slide. Our vision would be one space available for one teacher down there if all of that plays out. And then we have a space for the building for the future. So on day one, we could be ready to be spliced again. Sure. Yeah, day one, the students will have space, the instructors will have space. Okay. Everybody will be taken care of and hope that, you know, within the first week or two, if not beforehand, the garage is usable, the head house, the greenhouse, all that space is usable, lockers, all that, uh, with the back half being demolished and made safe. But that pad will remain, which we can temporarily use as an equipment storage and storage. So then the, the next challenge is to just would be to get power from the classic greenhouse. Um, we now have more. We already talked about what they want to do, but we have a way to get it out. And they're going to drop a 30th amp line down there. So it won't be, it'll be heat ventilation, but it's not going to be the full service they have because we're coming out of a smaller uh, What's the potential cost of the demo? Did, do you have any uh, idea? Twenty-two thousand five hundred was the estimate for that. I mean, who's submitting bids that you know of? Um, I, I associated. Yeah, associated with one of you. Sorry, when they came out. Um, I don't write it down. Um, I mean, I saw it. I might have reached out. We got three quotes. We attempted to get three quotes. You attempted initial. to get three. Right. In Associate. You're not sure if you are certainly associated. No, I've got someone else developed the bids. Now it's, it's all been on, it's on Central Register. Yeah, okay. It's Anyways, all right. And then, all right. Um, rewind a bit to what Joe said. Uh, I like what you have to say, Joe, about all the spaces and being able to utilize them. Um, obviously, concentrated is it's better, but we don't have that. Um, so we have to be flexible and be able use all these other spaces and multi-purposes and I'm totally on board at least my opinion to get the forestry building online get, get heat and power and whatever we need to do to make that more of a usable space we have the space we need to be using it not just storage so when you talk about the equipment and being able to move dirt dig ditches you're talking up there correct Yes, we have the space. There's, uh, there's a space up there that's probably equivalent to the athletic field here that is primarily open. There's some new growth that's come up that, but again, they can practice their trade by clearing the land. Yeah, by clearing. Uh, and, and having it set. Okay. 
So, um, I a thousand percent agree. Uh, I think the focus here should be your classroom space. But I like the ideas that Kevin's proposed around some of the, you know, multi-purpose spaces and storage and um, tractor. You know, I like the idea of knocking down that red storage barn uh, that's to the right of come back on the current building. I don't know how much, if, if the whole thing comes down and it's rebuilt and we are able to do, the finance committee or, or the board is able to do a two to three million dollar bond that we can service, that it doesn't put the school in a, uh, I don't want to create, I want to, we want to solve problems, right? I know we all do, but we don't want to create problems for the next set of administrators. Um, you know, I was talking with Andy the other day. Andy and I will hit retirement age in 13 years. We don't look it, but you know, I'm 47. And I don't want to have these projects be a ball and chain on the next group that comes in. I also don't, you know, want to undersolve problems. So hopefully we can find that sweet spot as a committee. Um, but I do think some of it is that multi-purpose space and, Either we renovate what's left, or we are, are able to find a way to take it all down, and at least it's new with enough classroom space and well thought out space that is multi-purpose. So I think you know the, our, our main purpose and mission statement is to get the school open and make it safe for the instructors and the students. Uh, as far as uh, slowing everything down. Uh, I don't want to put a ball on chain on Kevin either in regards to, you know, him, him, him spinning his wheels and we, we, we do have a purpose and we do want to fix it. Uh, but I think the reality is, uh, and I appreciate Andy throwing the caution flag out in regards to being a realist. I know that when uh, David was there and Susan Gray was here, and we talked about bonding. Uh, we have a triple A rating in regards to our city. So I know that we get money. It's just a matter of what the mayor, and again, not burdening that end in regards to having only 20% of the students in the North Hampton, <clears throat> what she'll buy into or what the city will buy into the city council. Uh, so there's a lot of pieces, uh, I think. I leave it up to the chairman, but I mean, as far as the construction of what we can do internally and what we can, you know, I hate to use the term humanize together, uh, but to, to be fair and realistic, I don't put all the burden on crystal either about, you know, where's the money? I mean, I, I want you to work with the finance committee so that you can spread that out to have people help you with that goal. And I think we may need some people from the city involved in that finance piece. So. If I may, I think our next step is to have me, the mayor, and um, the city finance director, just to, because again, just stop this, right. just brainstorming, thinking of ideas, sure. just to see what potentially the city will do. Right. Because we can sit here and look at this all day long, but and, and hope that they're I'm having a deja vu moment. I mentioned that to Mike just a half an hour ago. <laughs> no, we're all we're all seem to be on the same page, and and I'd like to take or let Joe take the lead in regards to the programming and in the facility space required because he's you're the manager of this place. You're the principal, and you don't should know more than anybody what you need to do for the students. Andy's role is to get us the money, hopefully, and Crystal being the, the nuts and bolt person of running the numbers and what we can do. And so, yeah, I agree. I totally agree with that. So how do we go about that and, and also leave this meeting with giving direction to Kevin? One, one more point of information for the committee, though. That second grant that Andy mentioned, we're probably not going to find out about that grant until like December. So <clears throat> this may be something where 
we're moving forward on this sort of parallel path before we find out what we actually have and that gets sorted out. And then I, just, you know, I think that'll help inform your decision making in different directions. But we might want to know until then. But I do want to spend money, like in. Andy says, on um, projection that we don't have. We're, we're anticipation. But again, if we start to build on that and it doesn't come through again like, like Joe Comfort, uh, you know, we don't want to be standing here with an empty bag. That's why I, I, I was recommending let's figure out what we need with the ability to add on if we need to. I agree. So if that's okay. Sound. I agree. Yes, absolutely. And we have these parallel tracks. We need, we need it start moving forward with an end game in mind. We, we have a basic end game and then we have all these alternate tangents going along with it that we hope maybe to make a reality and we need to identify those. So, so are we tasking ourselves here today to start getting uh, heat and power up to the forestry building? 3,600 feet up the road. Yep. So you said there's already conduit from Route 9, two-thirds of the way up? Yep. And so now we start getting quotes to pull this all together? Do we need to do any bidding on this, or is this something we, uh, what do we need to do? What's timeline to I guess I'm uh, No pressure. Uh, okay. I don't know, so we're going to go separate, right? So that's what they're saying. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know. I'll have to. Um, if, if, if I could, if I had it right now, I'd still take two weeks to get it out. Um, let me find Let me get an estimate just, and, and see if Sarah will let us come to the somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, who's Sarah? On uh, conservation. So okay. She, she kind of held us off the last time I asked her. So, um, you you have the knowledge to navigate the process to start moving forward in some sense and getting working with the city to put it out to bid for. Um, you know, we threw out the idea of septic, which makes sense instead of trying to bring a line up there. But then, are we shortchanging ourselves by? Septic's designed appropriately it should be a non-issue, and I gotta assume it's a lot cheaper than bringing up a sewer line up the road. Yeah, the building's all site that's kept away from the line. Okay, so that was some original thought process when this was all okay. Depending on what this costs, they'll have to find funding sources. Right. When we talked to Sarah, I mean, they did more than emergency situation to do this. I would use that as part of the dialogue. Yeah. You know, you've met with us as the trustees. It's an emergency situation that we're trying to solve. It's a great school starting out. So, you can dialogue with us. So, I would just start getting a contract Students are building maybe you know a, a, a 22 by 40 structure instead. Um, 
because we can offset something right. that's already up there. So that brings that cost down and what was in here. It's deep enough. It's deep enough to put two pieces of equipment back to back. Yeah, I think right now you have the, the trailer and the chipper up there. Yeah. Oh. I'm not sure what else is up there. I don't track but yeah, definitely been down on the back of the dozer front of the one of the trucks up there. So that stuff can put it there now. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially if we got the grant with the new pieces of machinery, it'd be a great place to put it at. How's the road going up in there? Can we get in on there? It's good now you're talking. Um, it's good to the uh, it's good to the cell tower. It has been up there. Okay. <laughs> well, you leave your uh, exhaust pipe very low. I no, know. I know, I know. Um, to the cell tower is good. Then there's still another button here. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So right now. Tim's task to start getting ideas on what it's going to cost to do that. Um, we're going to arrange a meeting with the city in some respects. And how is that going to how is that going to be handled? It's going to take with Crystal. You'll work with Crystal with that. Crystal's been working with the finance director. We agreed in a conversation with somebody like that. This sounds great, but at the end of the day, the mayor needs. Okay, so let's let's target a number what we're we're hoping to get to going along with Joe's idea of multi-purposing spaces throughout campus and getting the forestry building online. Um, what are we talking about? Four or five million? Let's try to be a realist here. So in this meeting with the mayor, we might be able to find out what the city would be able to contribute. So if they're able to help contribute, that might help raise the number a little bit. So Yeah, I'm just trying to get the conversation yeah, going. Yeah, no, we're not totally what, what, what's our end game? I'm brainstorming these numbers as as we sit here thinking as of different okay. ways that we could pay for this. So, okay. Um, so we know we have the trustees meeting coming up on the tour that we want to meet before them. Well, here, this is what, when you went to the restaurant, sir, this is what we decided. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, you didn't have that, okay. you didn't right. have that info. That's correct. Right, right so, there. Thank you. All right. So, right. Tuesday the 30th at 3 for this yep. meeting. Yep. And then on the 20th, we have the BOT. So, we'd also meet again then. Okay. And um, so, in the meantime, Crystal and Andy are going to work with the city and try to work numbers, see what we can possibly get without what showing our hand. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, saying, you know, hey, we don't want to go in there and say we want 10, 11, 12. We're going to play it so we can see what we can get. So again, depending on how they would calculate it and what percentage that they are willing to put into this, um, that would reduce our cost and then we'd be able to find it. Okay. And then I'll work, prior to that meeting, I'll work with the instructors and the building level admin and try to come up with a final idea of what really should be a part of it. I have my own thoughts in talking with them that I can share right now. I think I have shared some of them, but I'll get a final of what a minimum design would be. Okay. Can you expand on what you just said, Joe, please? <clears throat> yeah. Um, as I started to say before, the red building came down. If there was a way for us to design a building in such a way or add on and renovate what's there so that it wrapped around the existing greenhouse down there. Um, so on Kevin's drawing, drawing or the, one sorry, the, the bubble uh, cab one. Okay. Uh, he has a large, he has a large, <coughs> this, this there. Okay. Yeah. I can send the packets around. Um, I think the hope would be that if that <coughs> red struck bar comes down, that, you know, Tim's made the point a couple times, and I, I agree with him, is that the classroom space around campus needs to be increased, especially with these programs. We're only going to be able to get two. 
two out of the GCC building that we had hoped for. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I, I do think if we can get three to five, um, four or five classrooms. So I don't know if that's that front garage that's currently there down the back, if right. that can be renovated into the large classroom, if we were going to go with a renovation scheme. Is there a way for that large that garage down there to be renovated into the large classroom? Sure. We would still have the smaller classroom. Sure. We add one or two off the back, or one or two off the side where that the red barn is, mm -hmm. um, and where the head house is, create a locker room hallway space that would get you from those classrooms into the head house. The other classrooms are there in the head house, sort of like um, where Kevin has the lobby circulation area. <clears throat> If that is the head house, because we are maintaining the current greenhouse, if that head house becomes sort of that lobby area, if in the front we renovate to become retail space. <clears throat> so if you're coming in that front space, that's where they can have the head house, the retail space, the greenhouse immediately behind it. If you go off to the right, you have classrooms. You go off to the left, you have classrooms, which would then put where he has the greenhouses and the head house, maybe all the garage space and um, storage is in the back side there. Um, so we go up on a hill to use our repair space for the Which would allow, because there's a change in elevation, I think it would allow us to have a taller um, garage spaces that could be multi-purpose with the indoor climbing and the other things, but I would leave that up to their expertise. But I think if, if I was going to Checked out, recommend the minimum what we would need. I think that design would easily fit it because you'd have the two sets of classrooms with the central location being the head house and the retail hallways going off that could be the locker room spaces, sort of like we currently have. And then as you go deeper into it, you would have the instructor offices, you'd have the garage spaces, and sort of fitting the footprint that we we have. But, but adding on to where that red storage barn is. That would be my a recommend, a recommendation. I think in talking with Melanie and talking with um, others that would give us, I think the minimum, a little more than the minimum of what we need. I mean, it's an improvement. And the spaces would be improved. Just a thought, Joe. Yes, sir. <clears throat> in an interim situation with some of our farm animals, are we going to, does any of this affect in the animals? Okay. What I was thinking is the barn that's down the fairgrounds that we're going to use for the fair. That they may have some space down there that if we needed extra, whether for the animals or for a purpose, that we needed a temporary 90-day window or something, or stuff could be dry storage. Do you want me to approach the fair on that situation? I'll defer. What do you think, Tim? As far as the animals go, it should, it should be all right. Okay. What, about, what about dry storage? I mean, vehicles are for storage for 90 days for, for any farm equipment? Um, basically, we can use the farm as the state hospital. Oh, okay. And we're, and we're putting the plastic back on that greenhouse on the uh, road. They built that. So we're going to put, try to use that for uh, hay storage. Perfect. And that will open up more space in the hospital. Right. We'll just keep that in mind. Yeah. We may have an availability there for it. Yeah. And no problems. Yeah. And that's what we're using. It's a cost. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can. Uh, I think we have some flexibility with the roads down there, too. Especially the Well, let's recap. So, Andy and Crystal are going to start working on the money end internally and with the city. And then Joe's vision, we're going to start trying to make a reality um, working with Tim and Kevin. Does anybody jump in if I'm saying something that's not realistic for where we're going um, and 
Joe's going to work with his instructors on what do we need and what more can we possibly get. And so we got the bids coming in, you said Thursday? Uh, one of the 24th. Next, next Okay. Next Wednesday. And then potentially by the end of the week, you'll have. Can, how quickly can you get somebody on board? Well, so they have. They have to think so notification so three days and then whatever as soon as we can sign a contract was there. Well that's what I'm getting at. How quickly did that process happen? So we would have to wait for a board meeting to vote to for the funding. To accept it. Correct. What do we work to do here for you? So we come down the road twenty fourth. Probably the following week because we have to um, have a meeting. Then um, do a contract. Yeah. So we'll no. no, we're saying because we'll meet with the company on the 24th. I mean, we'll get the bids on the 24th. We'll get that out depending on what the funding source that we'll be using the putting towards the insurance account. Okay, so then we don't have to decide the funding. So then we would find the contract, come to the trustees for 48 hours, once we get the vendor, then the contract. So in still two weeks. Yeah. A little, give or take. We can put a rush on it with the city, ask them. So we're not taking that building down. Parking lot first. I'm sorry, why do we need a board meeting? We don't. I, you know, I misspoke. Because we talked about the, we're going to have to charge it towards the insurance. Would be as fast as you can get a contract class and then put a sign to my space. That's the best. Okay. 48 hours for the trustees. And then the whole doctor sign process. So, in theory, it could be yes, we only draw on Wednesday. You could have a guy here at the end of the next week on Thursday, Friday, and everything. It must be very one to buy one sign. You can post a sign on the job. You're going to take them a week, say a week, to tell them clean up. I, I don't know at what point did they took down the hard stuff. At what point did the city let us go back in there? The building was all set. You know, if they, if, I mean, there's not much there. Right. right. So they they take it down. They have it down. Got stuff in this box that first day. Yeah, that first sure. day. Yeah. And at that point, the city's okay. We'll clear. You know, make sure you clear away from the from the back of the hurdles you're keeping. Our class use the class. Okay, so we've got some stuff settled. Now, are you comfortable on talking, Kevin? You comfortable with information you've heard today to continue to work with Joe and his team? Where are we at? And we have a contract with you, right? With the has a kid in front of you. Yes. So right. you're going to keep moving, right? We are. I mean, okay. we, you were talking about parallel paths. So I assume that the, the kind of new building is still off, is off the table at this point, like the one that we were kind of planning for with this. It's our whole. Well, it kind of depends on what the city does. Right? But you still have a loan on the city yeah. came up and said, hey, we'll give you $6 million. Whatever. So. You are kind of in a holding pattern without really knowing that information. Yes, no? Yeah, I mean, we, we could move forward with the existing building and try to plan on something around that. You know, and that's what you want to do. Um, and that, that becomes like the favored, you know, path. Because right. it's affordable and, you know, I, mean, I know you can't know what you're going to expect to right. get out of the well, city. Well, I think practicality and realistically that's the path we need to take right now does everybody concur Joe is there is there is there a way kind of Kevin was just talking to me on the side is there a way to do maybe two or three plans concurrently like could Kevin's team look at okay how do we redesign and build off that but also what if we were able to take it down and plop something new on there but maintain the greenhouse but Kevin then just also asked about um, is there has anybody yet thought about a possibility of putting one or two classrooms onto the GCC, old GCC building, uh, which would free up space on the upper side? 
that, that was a question I asked Tim yeah, earlier. That, he they said that, that GCC look at that you know, and kind of backed away from it. I don't know if it was the elevation size or it was the septic lines down there or, or what held them off from doing it. Does any sense for modular classrooms during this process? Does that make any sense? I mean, it's an expense that you spend out and you have no return on sites. I would instructional space for that period. I, from my perspective, classroom wise, I we may have to talk about it next summer. Um, I think this year we'll be fine. Okay. Based on the timelines, I mean, we have a plan pending the grant to renovate that building to make it the new animal science building, right. uh, which will shift kids out. Which will, so there's phases of that renovation to fully get companion animal in. I think that we have planned out in three phases. Um, that we can make work during the school year that will have minimum impact on instruction. But depending on where we go with this building, I, maybe next year is the time that we have to question around maybe a temporary garage space or you know almost like tents or modular classroom. We'll have to see because our our student body is growing. Right. So if this is a major construction that crosses over the school year, then. We have to discuss it next. I think next the other major. thing we have to uh, keep in our concept here is the new dock kennel that the city's going to put building up here also. What can we tap off of that? Is there any extra that we could put a classroom or put a, an additional space that you may require that ties in with the animal companion that we could justify coming out of that building that the city may be able to help us with? So that's our thought process. So just thinking about that, because some of this is going to coincide with our building that they're going to someday call and say we're ready to I want to be infrastructure-wise, if, if they're paying to have all that infrastructure and the power and stuff brought to that building, right. is there a way for us to tap off right. to build? You know, if we are going to have, you know, hoop house yeah. greenhouses or something, is there a way just to come from sure. there? It might, it might be easier than coming down so the line that, with a permanent so that would be a question now. If someone's designing, they're, they're yeah. asking all those questions right now. Yeah. What's going to come off of it? I don't know if there's that's someone that's that part of the uh, Is uh, Central Service doing that? Yeah. Uh, they, Do we have any Pomerantz is gone? He's gone. Yeah, yeah. And if they're going to do improvements in the sewer, does that open up what's going to animal science the for us? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it would be a good idea to find out what their timeline is, how they're moving forward, how can we dovetail in with them and get something out of this, obviously. Right. Okay. All right, so then back to Kevin. Um, so you got stuff you can work on? Well, I think, you know, I think Joe and I can develop a revised program, you know, kind of based on what's going to shift out of this building talking about and then you know once we get that figured out then we can look at options for um, adding on to the existing building D for building M you know that's a, that's a possibility okay because I think we can keep it fairly simple you know whatever we add on we can keep it into one addition so that would be better than two okay so Yo, we're at the point of adjournment for today. Everybody have to make it work. Marching orders in a sense are fast <laughs> to accomplish. Do you're all set? Then I think just projecting out to the two meetings. Really don't want to waste Kevin's time. Are we are we comfortable with Kevin and team? On the 30th, if we don't have a, an updated script with, with Joe between now and the 30th, then you know, Crystal and I will hopefully have some type of response from the city. Then you may have an update as far as this forestry. Yeah, I think I'll call the pizza. So we'll, we'll still keep the 30th on the meeting. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, let's keep it on the table if we got a post. Get rid of it, we get rid of it. So, yeah, because I need to plan for these things because of my schedule. So, I'm going to plan for it, and if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But, yeah, you've got Carl's excavating, you got Deeds. I know both of them. So, 
but you have contacts, right? Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Yeah, I, would, I would kind of put this together just thinking about how big the building was going to be on this site because we're kind of expanding out beyond the boundaries. And I know that you said you kind of take over roadways, but you know, if you think about greenhouses taking off this part of the land, you know, it really starts to conflict with that, that part of the land. So I was just kind of looking at the different areas. And, you know, one of them was just going back to the conversation with Ben and Joe. You know, there is some area here. Yes, it kind of slopes up to the, to the football field, but, you know, it's, it's a possibility for another option. So, you know, if we're looking at two options, maybe putting an addition on this building or adding onto this building, you know, once we develop the program, we can come up with those two options for, you know, path forward. The Yale Patrol facility happened that we keep referring to is sort of down where C and D found the lower part. That's kind of where they're thinking the Yale Patrol facility is going. Oh, down here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right where that road is. And you, you haven't highlighted yet. Yeah, right now. Basically, that whole section. Yeah, so, yeah, that that, that whole section. Right there. Where those yeah. trees, those trees be gone. Right. That's where we put that thing. This is the right next Right, that B section, which slopes up to the football field, that oh, there's, elevation there's, also there's drops off yeah. from the building that isn't highlighted. That's what Tim, you're, you're, that, that's your concern, correct? If we were to build off the same elevation as that GCC building, there's a big drop in the field of the building. Right now, I think that A. All right, so um, I guess we're ready to adjourn. anymore of Kevin's time. I did have other property committee issues um, and we're all gathered. Tim, you've had some more time? All right. Thank you, Kevin and Shelby. Thank you. Kevin. Thank you. Um, okay. You want to go back for us before yes, sir, if you have a okay. So, yeah. just to bring all of you up to speed as, as far as the the action plans or the expansion of the exercise. We got the same thing that we're going to work out elsewhere. We plan on renovating the Greenfield Community College building as soon as possible. That will turn into more two classrooms, instructor office space, locker room space, washroom. That is done. We can move the animal science kids basically the classroom space down to that. That then frees up. We're currently using the MS classroom Sweet space. Right. Thank you. Thank um, you. Hold on. Yep. Um, so, renovate the GCC slash old rec building yep. for animal science. I'm just breaking it down, no specifics. And what's the potential timeline on that? Hopefully the fall semester, we're going to meet with the instructors in the first week of school that student instructors that will support that. I think Tim was also going to see if custodial or farm techs could help with the demo part of it and they could just come in and do the renovation part. And who's they? The carpentry? Carpentry, cabinet making, electrical plumbing. Yeah, okay. One thing as far as these other programs that we do in regards to habitat and stuff like that, we're going to put those on here. To some extent, to yes. um, in speaking with Chad at the end of the year um, and the plumbers, 
Chad's going to have a full, this is the, so we've gotten a second carpentry instructor. So that shop has now two instructors, which frees Chad up with the upper class. I mean, he's got a full, almost, he's got, he's going to have students on both weeks now. Whereas in the past, he was only able to do stuff on like the senior week. Right. So now he'll be able to do work on junior, senior. So in talking with him, he felt confident <coughs> that he could take on more projects around campus because he's going to have, you know, six, eight kids that can right. work and he's going to have that every week. Uh, and with the other instructor being able to handle um, the ninth grade, the tenth grade, and they did that instructor has experience with a carpentry instructor elsewhere. Um, so it shouldn't be that much of a okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So he'll he, he's confident he can handle more work, but I, yes, he hasn't fully committed uh, with them for any additional buildings. At this point. So what are what is carpentry committed to now? Are they working with Habitat out on Bird's Pit? Is then we have they have some some work, but. The last time I spoke to him, he wasn't anticipating much in the fall. So <clears throat> he felt confident that he could help in that building. He could also felt confident right. that they could also help with the health care center. Uh, there's funding. Do we know anything of the funding of the health care? I, I had a meeting with uh, their team late last week. Uh, they hired a fundraiser yeah. consultant uh, working with them to buy them bunch of contacts, advisory members, and there's a lot of contacts with health and school here. So the beginning of those numbers. Um just shared something I was surprised hey, by that we're sharing our contacts with them. I thought there were discussions somewhere at some point that we were hesitant to because we would be going to the same well. But so we're so so not sharing Horticulture advisory members. Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right. Take it. So, Those might be the contact you may have. All right. So we're, we're helping in some way as we can without. Overstep. Okay. Perfect. That's. Thank you. All right. Yes. I'm sorry. I just want to clarify something that I had said earlier. I just spoke with Joe Cook. If, as long as the bid comes under twenty-five thousand, I can issue a purchase order. We will not have to do a contract. So that will save us time. Which yeah, yeah, that's a little and easier. We reference the PO and we yeah. could solidify it like right For which piece? The, the demo. 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 Okay. demo. Okay. Where we thought we had to do the contract. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Teacher office space, locker room space, laundry. Room space. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. But at the same time, the hope would be that um, pig pens would be built in the dairy barn, so that once that phase one was over, pigs could be moved there, um, rabbits could be handled as necessary. That's in the current nursery. Um, as George was alluding to. Once we get those kids moved up, right now we're currently using it as a classroom and in the nursery bar, we sort of have this temporary classroom set up for the So pull the kids out. As Joe said, if we can renovate the dairy barn down below, we can move the pigs down there. That has now vacated the nursery bar. <clears throat> the concept right now is to potentially take the nursery bar down, work with an architect so we can build. That would become the dog grooming part of the program. It becomes that space. While we also renovate the MS classroom space that would now be vacant, that would become the pocket pet. Basically, the companion animals, the small animals, um, go into the, the former classroom. There would be a small uh, expansion off of that. Uh, so, we want to keep the apartment tech office where it is, but we need to have a quarantine space because these are small animals that come in and they quarantine for a period of time. There would be a small space built off of that classroom. So the MS classroom turns into the small animal lab. The nursery barn is rebuilt uh, to be the, the dog kenneling grooming area. And down below underneath the dairy barn becomes the pigs and other animals. And the MS barn continues to be a multi-species barn. Uh, we're also looking at an outfitting of support stalls so we can continue to expand the equine part of the program. So that, the grants we're writing right now that Joe and Melanie submitted truly target that animal science piece because then hopefully we get that grant, even though it's being applied to animal science, I was going to go in front of the board anyhow 
before the fire, I was going to go in front of the board to ask for tuition and volume to help with this renovation. If we can use the grant money for these renovation projects, I can stand in front of the board and ask for tuition and volume money to be part of the horticulture committee. A gentleman by the name of Barry Roberts here. He's a great owner of the community. Right. Barry talked to me personally about the fire, also about the decoy program expansion. Uh, he has very, very, very deep pockets. Uh, I would not be the first to do. I can talk to him if you gave me a number of what, what would help him. I think he would possibly step up to help us. Uh, he loves the school. He wants to do anything he can. I mean, he, we can use him on the decoy side, let him build that program monetarily, or we can talk to him about a contribution right now. So we'll be looking at, I don't know money-wise, but we'll be looking to add four uh, horse stalls. Yeah. Um, probably renovate this small barn that's off the back, mm -hmm. that shed barn that houses them, and rebuild the paddock in the back. Okay, what about? I don't know what that would. I don't know what the cost would be. I set up a meeting with Barry to come over and we can do a walkthrough. How's that? Okay. Just open the door that time. We've got to get through the fair, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to. Yeah. Much on the plates wrong, yeah. And then once that's done, we'd expand the four more systems too. Okay. <clears throat> definitely will help us with that. So. Okay. All right. Um, my other big picture property committee issue is I know the school owns a lot or, or stewards of a lot of property, such as Hospital Hill stewardship. Um, I know a bit about that, but I feel I need to know more. Uh, I'd like to, uh, we must have some site plans of some sort of what's under our jurisdiction and what we're doing with the property. Uh, I happen to ride by the Bird's Pit property on Sunday on my bike. It looked like that farm area there where the barns are and the compost pile is. It looked like the compost pile had just been reworked uh, or needed yeah. up. <laughs> well, um, we removed one of the piles and condensed them. So okay. We're getting ready to rebuild the pad there. And so, how does the composting program work? Is it stuff we get from here, goes up there? Uh, originally, it was we were taking outside material from restaurants, and then we kind of went back to what we produce in the cafeteria. <laughs> um, take a bunch of leaves from the top, wherever they happen to be, and stick them on the rest of the road. Uh, so, that's pretty much what we are now, our own window work. City leaves. So, your your team um, maintains that piece of property, and that all the fields have been recently cut by the looks of it. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to get more knowledge of what happens here. Right. And so everything. Like, oh, okay. So, well, my where I'm going with this, is, Tim, is. Um, I'd like to get together, well, I'd like to get the site plans, I'd like to review them, see what we're stewardship so far, start to learn more of the whole process so I can be a better board member, whatever. Yeah. I feel I feel a little lost, to be honest with you. Well, there's a lot. Now, the state, state just had it surveyed uh, last year, so I have plans for that. Great. Okay. Tim, maybe you can talk about <clears throat> in the last five years, basically reclaim that side of it. Up the street. Right, they've been working to push back the, the fence line. You know, the previous farmers weren't, you know, the brush kept growing and trees kept growing, and every time it rained, it fell or leaned into the field, they dragged around it. So they've been working pretty hard to push everything back to, their, to the original fence lines. Who's they? Farm crew. Farm crew, okay. okay. We claim that lane, they built fences yeah, they well, behind they, there. What I call that Sunset Hill. If you're coming up from community gardens, you come up the hill and you, you turn, you got the jail over here, that piece there I call Sunset Hill. So I go up there and watch Sunset and Moonrise. And, and that whole piece of property um, some years back had kind of gone into overgrown stage and now I see it's really maintained. So we have new fences pretty much all the way around. We hired an excavator to come in and so, clean that brush off. So who did the fence work? Did that the farm? The farm. So this is all being done in-house? Awesome. Okay. All right. 
So um, and the next phase for Tim is they're rebuilding that garage and the roof. So a pad in the in the roof when you're done. We were on the subject. Uh, Tim and I met with Barbara Hobson recently down the back side of uh, off of Bridge Pit Road down by the water with the dog park that I used to use that term. Uh, people walk dogs. People walk come across that water and they get down off that hill. That Wayne Feigen wanted to bring in and pave that whole area and make it useful year round for bicycles and for people walking and all that. Barbara Hobson asked our view on that and I told her that liability wise that we do not want to take on that liability and she said that the city was going to have a meeting and that we needed to express that to the city does anybody have any knowledge of the meeting or all right so i think i need to talk to okay. wayne fine strong well He's carolyn's not carolyn's, not carolyn's right. been appointed right chairperson but whatever apparently there's a third party involved in this whole process that is a white group that's within I, the city. Well, that would be George's group, right. FNTT. But I'm just, I, I think thought there was another group, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I thought there was another group that was trying to, wasn't there another group that was trying to plant trees and things that block people from coming in there? Like, we've been doing well, erosion that, control right. down there because we're losing that bank. So down there on the Riverbank, we, a couple years ago, we worked with another group in Smith Falls to plant, um, oh. um, to replant the Riverbank and then fence it all up and took the dogs off. That, that was a disaster. That just is a fence down. Yeah, I mean, we had signs up there that said erosion control, stay off, and nobody respected it. And there's other uh, citizens that kind of help us out, you know, like they, they donated trees and planted them along the dog park and put those nice stakes in the stuff to the park more if they want. But it's okay. not going that. Well, that's kind of why the, the paved road was up there against because we have made a little control that are there, yet you want to make more access. More accessibility for more people. Right, right. <laughs> okay, I'll follow okay. up for Carol. Well, the natural space is being degraded, so I know there's people that want to be out there to enjoy the natural space, but they're doing harm. Right. There's so many different groups that have what they think rights to, you know, there's the Frisbee Golf, there's the Running Club, the Minute Running Club, which are, they're actually really good for who they are. Uh, there's another there one club, isn't no. there, that wants access to it? Well, no, Sugarloaf was Tuesday, back yeah. it was Tuesday night, so like 5 o'clock, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, you got the Frisbee golf course through up through, I've gone through there a couple times, and that's pretty cool, actually. Um, no, we got this great resource, and, and, and the public is utilizing it, and obviously we it's under our jurisdiction in reality, right? We're supposed to be controlling it or control it. Well, we're supposed to be using it. We have no control of well, I mean, <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Do, okay. do that's a good term. <laughs> yeah, that's another piece of the puzzle. How, how involved do we get? How involved do we say, all right, people, you, you're, you're, you're trashing our property? Uh, I think over the last nine years that I've been here, that that question's gone through an evolution. Right. Uh, and there hasn't been support from any law enforcement or city. So a lot of us have, you know, from my perspective, educationally, I'm not really involved in that land. Uh, we did try to have students go up there and, and, and other things, but I mean, we had goats up there that were attacked by people's animals. Uh, we've had other animals attack people, bite at people, or for a while, Kevin was trying to go up there on a regular basis. Uh, but it, it wasn't it wasn't a safe situation for him. So okay. we have a record of security. So we've kind of pulled out of there. And from my perspective, you know, I don't look at it as an educational space anymore. You deal with the the extreme when the you know when homeless people set up shelters there. Well, I know full full aware of what's on. Barbara Hobson did recommend that she was going to contact the uh, fish and game department to help control that, to try and go in and get some control back from their side in regards to the way damage is being done and, and what what is legal and what's not legal. And she also recommended, and 
Joe Brewer was involved in some conversation about this coming year about whether criminal justice students in regards to just touring through there, not asking them to stop people, not doing any of that. I, I would strongly push back on student involvement. People get very heated. Very heated really quick when you start talking about you know, Can I share something? Uh, can I share something? Just to, sorry, uh, I just got a call uh, in the in July. People assume the worst up there all the time. So, like for example, there was a kid up there blowing donuts in the parking lot, and the person called and wanted to say to me that it was my our kid uh, that we were up there, and the kid got in an argument with somebody. Um, I get more calls like that where the public is very upset at us, thinking that anyone up there is a representative of Smith than I do any positive stuff that comes out of that. Um, and that happens on a, a fairly regular basis. If I looked at my phone log, I would say I get somewhere between four and six calls a year from somebody very angry with no background information or anything that would support their idea that it's one of our kids or one of our representatives that's up there causing them problems. So. It's an interesting dynamic that we have to deal with on a semi-regular basis. I feel part of my responsibility being chair of the property committee, I need to know what's going on, plain and simple, <laughs> and, and what's our role in all this, and do, do we have a meeting with, with police? Uh, you know, I guess I need to start gathering information so I know how to move forward in a sense, and because I grew up going through the property. I, I, today, I still cross-country ski and mountain bike up through there. And I know the evolution of everything that's gone on around there. And I'm supportive of the public being able to use the property, but, you know, what what is our role? What is our responsibility? And I don't really know. So I guess I'll start finding that out. All right. You know, during COVID, when it first hit, they shut it down. The first time I heard the parking lot went up. And that still didn't work. It was still. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, all right. Um, okay. So, anything else, anybody? Um, can I get together with you, site plans, start yep. looking over stuff, and start getting more educated? And, uh, everybody feel. Something came worthwhile came out of this meeting. Yep. Okay. Do we get together about the